Yo, it's Sway. 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 In the morning. 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 Only on Shade 45. Wake your fuck ass up. Yeah. Bitches. Bobby Slayton is here performing at the Stress Factory on the 24th through the 26th in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And uh, Bobby Slayton, man, you, you know, you was uh, said yeah. to be Comedy Central is one of the top 100 comedians of all time. Which is nonsense and moronic. You know, you know what happened? First of all, when they did that list of the top 100 comics of all time, that was about f five, ten years ago before Bill Burr and Louis C.K. and uh -huh. Dave Chappelle. I mean, okay. But you know what? There's a lot of crappy comics on there. Yeah. And there's a lot, I think, you know, I think Roseanne Barr was number 15 or something. But, but you know what? Those those awards don't, and those things don't really mean anything. Yeah. Well, hey, you're in the top 100 comics. That's a lot of comics, you yeah. know? I know. One year, I remember I won the, they used to have this thing on TV, the American Comedy Awards mm -hmm. for, for best, you know, best comic. And Steve Martin would be on it. Richard Pryor would be on the it. Legends. It was, yeah. yeah, all these legends. And they give award for best club comic of the year to a woman and to a guy. And the first year, I think the best male comic, club comic, was Jerry Seinfeld. And the female comic was somebody big. I mean, it was a really nice award. Yeah. And the second year, uh, it went to uh, it went to me. It was best club comic. It was me and Paula Poundstone, best club comic, and it was whatever. Okay, uh -huh. you know, I'm playing club, and it was a nice little award with these loose sight, you know, comedy tragedy masks. Okay, and I took the award and was sitting on my desk next to my Gong Show trophy. I won the Gong Show, <laughs> the original Gong Show. <laughs> so the, these are my two. You know what? Yeah. I will never win an Academy Award or a Grammy or an Emmy. But I swear to God, if I ever did for some crazy reason win one, my Academy Award would be right next to my Gong Show trophy. I was proud of winning the Gong Show. The so Gong anyway, show. American mm. Comedy Award trophy sitting right there. The following year, the late, great Bill Hicks loses to Carrot Top, and yeah. I swear to God, I took that trophy, and now holds open my basement door. I want to work it out. It's a doorstop. It's a doorstop. Yeah. So it just shows you that these things, <laughs> you know, when Bill Hicks loses to Carrot Top, and I like Carrot Top, yeah. nothing to like or dislike, but it just shows you how stupid these things these are. Things it doesn't matter who the best is at anything. You know what? Um, Bobby Slayton has joined us, and I, I, I would have loved to accept the award on your behalf if you throw away the, you know. You, you can. The next award you get, I'll well, come up with the next you. Black Pride thing I win for uh, the fact <laughs> that my daughter dated a black guy. And, uh -huh. and I, you know, you okay, know what? so talk about, I got a daughter. So how did you feel when your daughter brought home a black man? Well, how would you feel? Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then so, so See, No, because I'm more like, I'm really a black guy. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that I do drugs <laughs> and I love white women. I'm on the same, come on, come on. Come on. Keep it real. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same as you. Keep it real. Let's put it this way. Um, you know, I didn't really care about that because, you know, I, I, I'll tell you a funny story. My daughter starts dating this guy and, um, you know, your father, you know, she's 18 or 19 and yeah. I don't care what color the guy is. You don't want your daughter dating. Mm -hmm. And I said to my daughter, I made it quite clear if you're gay, you know, or if you want to date a black guy, I mean, whatever you do, as long as you don't come home with a puppeteer. You come home with Jeff Dunham, I'll pull a bullet through both your heads. You come <laughs> home with a guy with a puppet, you, that's where I draw the line. Yes. No ventriloquist. Uh -huh. Okay. So, she stayed this black guy for like a year. But six months I was living in Vegas uh -huh. and I, I was only home one or two days out of the week. I had a casino I was working and I never met the guy and my daughter finally says, well, you know, he's black. And I said, okay, so. And then she goes, well, he's only half black. I go, okay, is, well, is it the top half? Because if it's the top half, I can work with you. Bottom half Asian, Ooh. top half black, I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> but the point being, I said to my daughter, how could you really think it would bother me you're dating a black guy when she used to say to me, she'd go through these boxes of pictures that mm -hmm. I've had. Hey, daddy, what movie was this? And hey, you were with Johnny Depp and you did this movie and, and you were with you know, Ray Liotta and, and Don Cheadle. It was in the Rat Pack. And she'd always be taking out these pictures and this is this your grandma? And she'd always find this picture of me and this black woman. I said, that was my girlfriend before I met your mother because I dated a black woman uh -huh. and she forgot. Yeah, and you know what they say about black women? What do they say? It's true. Once you go black, you never go back. Yeah, I couldn't go well, anywhere. I thought they were gonna say the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Wait, wait, wait! I didn't hear that. What's the, that the, one? The darker the, the berry, berry, the sweeter the, sweeter the, the juice. And then, but the one I know is once you go black, you can't go back. Yeah, that's for for white women that try out black men. Oh, really? Like your daughter? Why well, couldn't go anywhere? She took my wallet, my car keys. But that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Good night, Vegas. You're a great crowd. Try the veal. Yeah, the white guy. You like that? You Nazi? <laughs> okay, DJ. <laughs> DJ Wonder. Yeah. But, okay. But, anyway, but, so yeah, I didn't really care. But but here's what was really weird was that. Um, you know, he's a dancer, and uh, you know he was dancing with you know people like uh, Justin Timberlake, mm -hmm. and and and. Uh, but he got that gig in the movie. This is it. He was yeah. the first guy you see in the movie. Oh. So he gets his gig dancing with Michael Jackson, and mm -hmm. he's working with Michael. And I go home that weekend, and he's packed, and all his bags are packed, and he's leaving for England the next day. And if you're a dancer, probably the greatest thing you could do as a dancer, and this is what he's telling me, you're a hip hop dancer. 
is dance with Michael Jackson because that was unattainable because Michael yeah. was retired. Yeah. So it was Justin Timberlake. It was Christina Aguilera who he uh-huh. danced with. It was maybe Britney Spears or Usher. I mean, there's a lot of guys that would take backup dancers, but to dance with Michael Jackson because yeah. the guy was a legend. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. we all, well, he was alive. So he gets the gig. He's leaving the next day and Michael dies the night before. Wow. And he had just come back from rehearsal. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, when Michael died, I was in Vegas and I call up my daughter to see how they're doing. Yeah. He was still in rehearsal. They didn't even know for an hour that Michael died because they were in a studio recording. That's so sad. these dancers, yeah. I mean, it was horrible. Yeah. They're still dancing. Anyway, he told me that Michael was in fine shape. Michael was great. You know, he was a goddamn doctor. Uh-huh. I'm not saying that Michael wasn't on drugs, but, but, yeah. but he was fine. Yeah. That's according to one of the guys dancing with Michael Jackson. Every single day. So he Michael, said, Michael was there every day. Mm-hmm. I said, was he out of it? He goes, no, Michael was there. He said he might have been a little slow because he was 50, 50 yeah. and he's dancing with 23-year-old kids. Yeah. You know, I mean. But none other of us, than that. You know, he was he said, okay. He said he was fine. Was he crushed when he died? Like, uh, what happened I, to his career? Uh, he, you know, not only was he crushed, I mean, how can, can you imagine? Yeah. You're a dancer. You don't have that many gigs. So here's a gig in London for a month, which, I mean, besides the fact that Michael died, it's he's making some money. Uh-huh. And who knows how long that would have gone. Yeah. I mean, Michael might have dropped dead in the middle of that, but there could have been a world <laughs> tour. No, I, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy was- To be told, you never know. The doctor, I mean, you know, I mean, the what if he would well, did, did your daughter dump him after he no, lost the no, gig? no, no. No, no, he. So they, she's still no, being banged out by a black guy. I'll tell you what's. Well, yeah, why can't you be more romantic? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm no, just gonna, but let me tell you what the next step he's was. He's bending her over, Bobby. This is, this is horrible. No, it gets worse. <laughs> so he went on the tour in Australia, but six months later, yeah. uh, he finally, you know, he came out of it, started doing a few dates with a few other hip hop artists. He goes on the tour with Whitney Houston. She dies. Okay, so oh my he's like, gosh. matter of fact, I have a picture of him bringing my daughter on stage. He proposed to my daughter on stage. Uh-huh. Whitney brought my daughter up on stage, and they said Whitney was having her good nights and her bad nights. Yeah. Sometimes she, you know, we saw all the YouTube crap. Yeah. But, you know, he did the tour with Whitney and said she couldn't have been a lovelier woman. She couldn't have been nicer. You know, she was not in great shape, as we know. Yeah. But then after the tour was over, you know, even though the tour was over, then Whitney died, and he got really close to her. Yeah. You know, so it was a tough thing for the yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big sell your daughter, be careful. And then my daughter <laughs> dumped him. Well, <laughs> no, oh, and then she dumped him? No, they, but I said after Whitney died and after Michael died, he went on tour with, I think he did some dates with uh, a, a, a Ricky, uh, what's his name? Ricky, Ricky Martin. Yeah. And I said, somebody better call Ricky Martin because this guy's not a, <laughs> a, a, a black cat. It's a black cat. This guy's a yeah. <laughs> Bobby Slayton, man. Thank you for hey, coming. Thanks for having me. me. Hey, Yo, great. Ben, make sure you bring this guy back, all right? Yeah. Every time he's in the building, Bobby, you come by and join us. And I right? want you to say Bobby's in the building. No, no, that's about Elvis. Elvis left the building. Bobby's but in the in house. That, Bobby's okay, thank in the you. house. Bobby Slayton performing at Stress Factory from the 24th thanks to the 26th. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, brother. Hey, thanks for having me. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.